Hi friends, it's Cheryl from the Lifestyle Digs and I'm coming to you again from the porch swing on my sun deck and I'm here today to do another book review and it's a book called A Sip Before Dine by author Gemma Halliday. Now before I get started I want to say that my landlord is hanging the fields today. Yay, we've actually had some really nice weather uh, about a week of uh, no rain here. So uh, he's cut cut his fields and this is like the end of July. It's July 22nd today and he normally gets this, this cut of hay off in May. So um, he keeps coming back to the barn area with his tractor and it's this noisy diesel engine so he might get a little bit of background noise but right now he's over in the far pasture um, bailing up the hay that he's cut so hopefully he just stays over there and I don't hear the tractor again the, before I finish this. Anyway here we go. A Sip Before Dying by Gemma Halliday. And um, this book is about Emmy, Emmy Oak, and uh, she runs Oak Valley Vineyards in the Sonoma Valley in California. And um, I, I've read quite a few books by Gemma Halliday, and she's a, she's a great author. And I want to say that this book is exceptionally well written. There's nothing at all wrong with, with the book. Um, it, it takes place uh, on the vineyard. Um, Emmy has uh, been having money trouble and she's trying to come up with some more promotions with her vineyard. She's ha hosting a, a large party. She's invited a lot of the elite around the Sonoma and Napa Valleys and um, at her party one of the guests passes away and you know it, it, it appears maybe is a is a wine poison that's kind of like the first conclusion that everybody jumps to the fellow who died is a, a good-looking uh, young fellow he is the half-brother or the stepbrother I can't remember which to one of her um, old friends from high school and he is married to a, a woman uh, that runs a big technology business and so he's kind of like the boy toy husband he's, he's much younger than his wife so there, there's a lot of suspects in this book and, and I will say that that I was kept guessing um, about, about who uh, actually did commit the murder because yes it was a murder it wasn't just the wine that was poisoned but of course Emmy is on a mission to try to you know clear her winery's name and and that, that there was nothing wrong with the wine and you would think that would have to kind of be the synopsis because everybody else at the party was not poisoned and nobody else died and then it turned out that the fellow um, um, you know, it, it eventually did come out that that, that it was a, a murder, but but it was still almost kind of looking. Did 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 she Emmy poison the wine? Anyway, um, I I've traveled quite a bit in California, and I, I have certainly been around the Napa and Sonoma valleys, and I, I love trend. There, there's some gorgeous, breathtaking vineyards and and wineries and mansions, and and, it, and it's just it's just a great drive and you know I, I I first discovered the area back in the late 80s back when you could take tours of the wine cellars and get uh, for free and get a free wine tasting and the free wine tastings usually included two or three different types of uh, wine now I'm not a wine person so I would go to these tastings and I would take a little sip and bleh, and you just kind of put it aside it just wasn't for me but I do remember one one winery in particular called Buena Vista and they're in the, also in the Sonoma Valley, just, just like where um, Oak Valley Vineyards, the fictional Oak Valley Vineyards in this novel takes place. And um, Buena Vista uh, is mostly champagne. So I, I kind of liked that, even though I'm not, again, I'm not really a champagne person. But one thing I liked at Buena Vista, they had a non-alcoholic wine. So basically, they just had white grape juice available and I tasted some of that and I bought it I, you know that was the only place where I ever actually bought a bottle of anything and there it was just you know some overpriced grape juice I guess but but it was very good and these days none of the wineries anywhere offers you a free tasting it's all you know you pay your money and you get a tasting they might give you a bit of a discount if you buy some bottles of, of wine from them afterwards but even the winery tours these days no, nothing is free anymore you know the days of a free lunch are long gone i guess anyway um uh, you know sometimes i get bogged down in details the oak valley vineyard where, where the story takes place is on 10 acres now there seems to be an awful lot going on in this 10 acres um emmy um lives in her own house and there's also a couple other houses on the property that that belong to um some of the caretakers of the property who, who lived and worked there for many years and then there's offices there's the wine cellar 
um, then then there's you know the big parking lot. There's also a very long driveway that is lined with oak trees, and you know oak, oak trees can't be planted too close together, so the driveway is also pretty long. And uh, one day, uh, Emmy is walking out in the vineyards with her. Um, uh, I, I can't recall the name. I guess. Uh, the, the manager of the property and then she likes to walk up to the top of the hill and overlook her whole property from there that's that's always been her favorite place since she was a little kid going to the top of this hill now all of this takes place in 10 acres now i live on 10 acres and uh, my, my, our 10 acres is pretty flat but you know i can kind of you know in my mind's eye i can see this and i just can't see how, how you have all these buildings a long driveway and a hill on 10 acres, I, I I just I just don't get it. I, I I could see maybe a slope of some sorts, but uh, but when you get to the top of it, probably not that you can't oversee the whole property any any better or worse than anywhere else on the property. So um, you know I try I try to think well you know uh, the long driveway really kind of put me put me through because the the drive the 10 acres has probably got to be more in length rather than width. <laughs> and then and then I try to think, well, all, all the other stuff that's going on, all the various outbuildings, the, the, the wine cellar and the parking lot, that's all got to take, you know, three to four acres at best, if not more. But um, and then, then maybe five to six acres for, for the vineyards, which is certainly, you know, plenty, I guess, for vineyards are not that that big of a, a production. But it, it, how do you have a hill? I, I, I just I just don't get that. I've also lived on 20 acres, and we did have a hill, and, and we could quite see. I, I could see this on 20 acres or larger, but 10 acres was really kind of a stretch for me. I, I, I'm not quite sure what the author was imagining, but like I say, I got bogged down in the details of how is there so much going on in 10 acres, like all, all these oak buildings, this big long driveway with the oak trees, and then a vineyard on top of all this. It just... It just didn't fit in my mind's eye of where I live and I'm on 10 acres and you know like I say my, my lanyard's out, out uh, um, making hay right now he's cut the hay so he's bailing it today so so we have at least five acres o over in hay alone but but the other five acres it's all the various buildings their house my house um, there's two three barns on the property there's a long driveway but you know we don't we don't have oak trees but we have a whole bunch of trees behind me you can see that there's also trees that circle the whole property to that that border the property and there you have it for 10 acres so anyway um not quite my thing because I, i'm not a wine drinker that the whole wine thing kind of bogged me down a little bit too with the 10 acres so so i found all the wine references kind of boring but if you're the type of person who who enjoys a glass of wine and you enjoy you know searching for bottles of wine and, and you know your wines you know that this, this would probably be an excellent book for you it, it's well written it's got a good uh suspense storyline going on and and i definitely recommend it for reading um again it's called a sip before dying and it's written by Gemma halliday so go out and get a copy i recommend reading this one thanks for listening to my review today everybody this is cheryl from the lifestyle digs bye bye now